let's now look at uh, graphing trig functions in particular. So we'll start off with our sine curve. And yes, I know we've drawn them before, but now we're going to generalize it to any type of sine curve. Now, our standard one, we know the amplitude's one, so I'll plot in one and minus one there. And my divisions, I mark off every pi on two, or 90 degrees. A sine curve would start at the origin, then we know at uh, 90 or pi on two, it's equal to one, and then it goes down and up and up and down and down and up and, and so on in both directions. And we draw a nice smooth curve. And there's our basic sine graph. We know the domain, Oriel X. Range, minus one to one. Okay. But we could generalize it because now we could translate it and reflect it and do all those sorts of things. So we're going to call it y equals a times the sine of bx minus c. Remember the key terms? Period. That's how long it takes until the curve repeats. But it has to repeat in the same direction. So don't look at it and think, oh, well, it's pi because look, I'm at zero at naught and I'm at zero at pi. So it takes pi for it to repeat, got to be going the same direction. At zero, it's going up, at pi, it's going down. Two pi is how long it takes until it repeats. So the period of the general one will be affected by the horizontal stretch. So that is basically the coefficient of x. So we say it's two pi on b, whatever the coefficient of x is. The amplitude, okay, the axis of the sine curve up into the, the peak or the trough, down to the trough. Um, that's going to be affected by the uh, vertical stretch. So it'd be y over a or a sine. So the coefficient of the trig function, basically. Other things. Um, this is just something I do. It's not, it's not a formula or anything. But if I'm going to work out how I'm going to mark off my axis, I'll go, well, whatever the period is divided by four, because that's basically all the key features of a sine curve will happen every 90 degrees. So I know right, that's where I want to plot my points. Phase. The phase is the shift of the curve, but it's C divided by B. It's not just C, because the shift is when it's grouped with the X. It's got to be grouped with the X. So C divided by B. Uh, oh, and of course it's an odd function. We've got rotational symmetry there. That allows us to use the idea that sine of negative x is equal to negative sine x. That can be useful in uh, trig equations, trig identities, all those sorts of things. So if I wanted to draw this wonderful graph, y equals 5 sine 9x minus pi on 2. How would I approach it? First thing to do, work out the period. So this one will be 2 pi on 9. Then the amplitude will be 5. I'll just work, okay, I'm going to mark off every pi on 18. And I've shifted, not pi on 2 to the right, but pi on 18. The shift is function x minus a. So you've got to factorise the 9 out, if you like. So when you factorise the 9, you'll get x minus pi on 18. Okay, let's draw up our axis. Sine curve, well, normally, I would start at the origin. But we've shifted pi on 18 to the right. So I'm going to start there. Now the pattern still continues, so I go up and then down and up and down and up and, and we draw in our sine curve and there it is there. Now a couple of things to point out about this. Had they said uh, draw this curve from minus pi on 9 to say 2 pi on 9, then I wouldn't extend that sine curve through the point. I'd stop at where they say the endpoints of the domain are. Um, but if you are going to extend it through, don't put arrows on the end, because the arrow would indicate it just keeps going in that direction. And of course, the sine curve does not. So personally, I don't put arrows on the end of a piece of a sine curve. Okay, I'm not going to draw up the basic cosine curve. We've seen it a lot of times, but the generalized one would become a cos bx minus c. Now, as we know, sine and cosine, basically, it's the same curve. So period will still be 2 pi on b. Amplitude will still be a. I'm still going to mark off my divisions every period on 4. Phase will still be c on b. 
Uh, cosine, of course, is an even function. So we'd have cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of x. Okay, hey, here we go. Minus 4 cos x on 8 plus pi plus 2. So the period, 16 pi. Amplitude, 4. We don't say the amplitude's negative 4. Amplitude's like a magnitude, or just the size. Divisions, I'm going to mark off every 4 pi. So what are we done with the shifting? 8 pi to the left, 2 up, and it's upside down because I've got that negative there, so I'm going to have a, a reflection. Draw up the axis. Of course, the wonderful thing about this is you can essentially draw the same graph every single time. You just change the scale to match whatever graph you're drawing. It's only when you have to draw two on the same one, you, you, know, you have to worry about things like that. I suppose you could think of this as shifting the x-axis up two. Is that what you mean? Yeah, that's awesome. Ah, that's a good idea, that. Wish I'd thought of it. Okay, now, so I can shift the x-axis up two because it is going to make life easier. See, I would agree with you for those ones, for marking the x-axis. I, I don't know it's such a big deal yeah, with the vertical like ones. It, it's not the actual x -axis, but like that's right. So I've dotted it there. I think that's dotted. Well, I've drawn it very lightly, one of the two, anyway. So I know exactly where to plot those points. Okay, now the amplitude we said was uh, 4, so I'm going to go up to 6, down to negative 2. Mark off. Mind you, notice I still mark off on the x-axis, not on that dotted line that I drew in. Okay, cosine would normally start up at the amplitude, but we have moved that. We've shifted it 8 pi, no, this way, to the left, 2 up, and it's upside down. We'll end up down there. Remember? Reflect first, so it's upside down. Then we've shifted 8 pi, 2 up. Is that okay for the starting point? Thank you. Yep. Now, what will the cosine curve? It'll go to the axis, then it'll go up and down, up and down, and so on, and... There's our cosine curve. All right, let's try tan. So the generalized tan curve. Now, there's a difference here. Period is only pi on B. Remember, the period of the basic tan curve is 180 degrees, or pi. So we divide it pi divided by B. So now, my divisions will be the period divided by 2. Because, again, think about drawing your tan curve. What do you do? You go, oh, x-intercept asymptote, x-intercept asymptote, x-intercept asymptote. So basically there's two things happening as you go along. So we divide period by two. The phase is still C on B, mind you. And the tan curve is an odd function, has the rotational symmetry. So tan of minus x is minus tan x. Whoa, y equals e tan. <laughs> e tan pi x minus two pi. So the period is just one. So I'll mark off every half on my axis. Amplitude, well, we don't worry about amplitude with a tan curve. So really, throwing that E out the front means nothing. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to have a scale on my y axis. Again, it only becomes important if there's something else I was going to draw on it as well. And what we've done, we've shifted this one two to the right. Okay, okay, mark off every half. Now, tan curve. Normally, start at the origin. So this time, I'm starting at 2. Pattern, x intercept at e. The shift in this one didn't matter. Makes sense, because the period's 1. So shifting at 2 hasn't affected the graph at all. Because it was two periods. Unlike today, where we've got three periods. Anyway. Four. Oh, four all up. Yes, four periods. So we would have shifted four to the right. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now let's draw our tan curve in. And remember, when you're drawing a tan curve, it's not like a cubic. So you don't have a horizontal point of inflection there. It comes through at 45 degrees. And there it is. Why? Because E tan pikes. Now, when I say it comes through at 45 degrees, that's your basic tan curve. Now, obviously, we've done some shifting, but again, because I've got no scale on my y-axis, it, it doesn't really matter. I can still put it through at 45 degrees. Okay. 3J, 
Let's play. <laughs> it rhymes.